This, you know, here is it's Tennessee. So, you know, we're going to get the best guys here. You know, that's just every year. Um, every time we're out there, it's competition. You know, nobody has a spot. Nobody's comfortable. We're all working to get better. Welcome to the Hogan Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. We are riding the highs and the lows of recruiting. You know, one week we land five-star wide receiver Mike Matthews, also a priority in-state target, Edwin Spillman. And then the very next week, we're, we're talking about how this coaching staff can't close. But here they did close big-time four-star offensive tackle. Bennett Warren commits to Tennessee. This is huge, man. You look at the recruiting on the offensive line for the class of 24. They've done a really good job on the inside, adding Max Anderson, adding William Satterwhite, a couple of big-time four-star prospects. They've also got, you know, Jesse Perry and Gage Ginther committed three stars. You hope the evaluation is on point there. A lot of people saying that those guys are underrated. We'll see how their careers play out. But I think when you look at the recruiting at the offensive tackle position, the things that went down with Marquez easily, you know, missing on Daniel Calhoun, some of us start to question Glenn Ellerby, and then Bennett Warren kind of falls in our lap. And we're going to get into it and talk about how his commitment played out. But this is a big time win on the recruiting trail. Now you look at the class of 24 on three rankings. If you cheat, if you cheat a little bit, take Edwin Spillman, who's 301. Tennessee just landed their 12th player inside the on 300. That is huge. 12 of the top 300 players in the country are committed to Tennessee. I dropped a video this morning talking about the lines of communication between Tennessee and five-star plus defensive lineman Williams Winery are back open. This class is taking off. This class has an opportunity to skyrocket. We will see how it plays out. But this video is about four-star offensive tackle Bennett Warren. We're going to look at the profile, talk about his recruitment, take a look at the film, listen to the scouting report. But as always, do me a favor first, smash the thumbs up just below the video. All that YouTube stuff, it's quick, free, easy, and it does help the channel. Uh, also, if this is your first time on the Talking Balls Network, welcome. We're not experts. We're not insiders. We're not media. We don't talk at you. We talk with you. We are building a community of Tennessee fans right here on the Talking Balls Network. We would love to have you be a part of that. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Click that bell for notifications. You won't miss out when we go live or when we drop a video. We're going to be live later tonight. 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, playing a little NCAA football on the Xbox, but we also talk all things Tennessee. So come hang out and join us for that. But let's talk about Bennett Warren. You can see the profile there on the screen. Four-star offensive tackle out of Sugarland, Texas. Six, seven and a half, 330 pounds. Just the frame, the size, the length, that legitimate offensive tackle prospect. That is what Tennessee needed in this class, and that is what they are getting out of Bennett Warren. You can see their four-star, according to the On3 Industry Rankings, uh, top 15 tackle, comes in 13th as an offensive tackle, 157th nationally as a prospect. Now, again, let's talk about his recruitment. Kind of an interesting deal, right? Because Michigan had all the momentum in this thing, uh, but they were predicted to land another offensive tackle out of the state of Texas, and that was Michael Uini. So Bennett, Bennett Warren takes the visit to Rocky Top, falls in love with Tennessee. This coaching staff, his family enjoyed the visit. Everything was trending towards ten Tennessee, but then Michael Uini ends up at Georgia, and that brought Michigan right back into the mix. It was kind of a 50-50 battle back and forth. Michigan had the academics. Tennessee had the culture, the family. Uh, Bennett Warren found what he needs at Tennessee. The academics, everything is going to be just fine. But coming out of that visit, this is what Bennett Warren said about Tennessee. Said it was a really eventful weekend for sure. It was definitely one of my favorite recruiting weekends by far. Got to do a whole lot of stuff and got to do a whole lot of fun stuff. Uh, got to go out on the water, posted that a whole lot, just having fun and getting around a lot of good players was different. Love this coaching staff. They're very jokey and fun to be around. They can still win doing it. Said I went and sat and watched film with Coach Ellery. Got to see some of the stuff that they are doing that I'm already kind of already kind of doing. I uh, said it was it was just being done at a higher level. Says it's easy to see how I fit into that scheme, and it's not like I'm learning different plays or something that is completely new to me. Uh, Coach Heibel said they needed me. He said they, there aren't many tackles like me. That was a big part of his message. It's a really good feeling. They're a big difference between need and want. 
they really showed that this weekend. So that's what Bennett Warren had to say about Tennessee coming off of the visit. And Josh Ibel's right. They don't make many offensive tackles like Bennett Warren. It is such a priority position. We say it all the time, right? Just say it over and over. you got to have guys that can get after the quarterback, protect the quarterback, and you need the quarterback. we got the quarterback in Nico Iamaliava. We've got some guys that can get after the quarterback. Williams Winery, the video this morning, is another one that Tennessee really needs to focus on. But now you add a guy like Bennett Warren. I think he was, man, probably right up there at the top of my list as far as priorities go in this class of 24. But let's take a look at the film, let you guys see what Bennett Warren looks like on the field of play. Also take a look at the scouting report here. Uh, this is from Gabe Brooks, national scouting analyst over at 247 Sports. Says that Bennett Warren is an enormous offensive tackle prospect with elite height and length, legitimately six, seven and a half with a wingspan beyond seven feet. Says ready to play mass, but where's the bulk? Fairly well, plays with encouraging movement ability relative to immense size, shows lateral range and more light-footed locomotion than you'd expect for a tackle of his dimensions. Uh, displays effective kick slide and pass protection, swallows up smaller overmatched rushers, forceful once engaged. Look at the dominance. Look at the dominance out there at the tackle position. But again, the link, that seven-foot wingspan. We say it all the time. You can't teach that. You can't teach somebody to have long arms. You can't teach somebody to be 330-plus. You can't teach somebody to be athletic at that size. But that's what we're getting in Bennett Warren. It goes on to say he gets off the line well in the running game. Uh, capable of climbing to the second level on schedule and has flashed some power in his hands in that uh, capacity, possesses the desired three-sport athletic profile with basketball and limited throws context under his belt, likely faces a learning curve, significant jump in competition level from small private uh, high school to power five college opponents, can improve hand placement, sometimes gets catchy and grabby, uh, and can more consistently win with a power punch. Gifted tackle prospect with uncommon physical tools, possesses the frame and functional athleticism to become a high-level protector who can man the left side or dominate the right. Projects to the high major level with positive markers in size, on-field context, and multi-sport evidence that suggests a very high ceiling that could lead to serious NFL draft candidacy. So, you know, some of the things they say there about the, the step up in competition and, and and still needing to dial in some of his technique, some of his the, the things that he does on the football field. He's got the size and the athleticism, and you can't teach that. But something I think that Glenn Ellerby has done a good job with is development. Look what he did with Darnell Wright, right? I mean, I think, you know, putting him into the NFL draft, top 10 draft pick, now you add some guys like Bennett Warren, and let's develop them and, and put them into the league as well. Where does Tennessee end up? At the time I'm recording this video, which was earlier this morning, Tennessee sitting at ninth, according to the on three industry rankings in the class of 24. Saw some people doing some math saying that Tennessee could jump as high as fifth. But again, having 12 players, cheating a little bit because Edwin Spillman right outside of that, but 12 players inside the on 300, just absolutely huge. The NCAA investigation is over. We, we are just going to continue to move forward. And I still think, I still believe that Tennessee has a shot at a top five class. You look at the guys left on the board. Of course, Amari Jefferson scheduled to come off the board next. I'm not sure that I have much confidence that he ends up at Tennessee, but you've got guys like Jordan Ross, Camarion Franklin, the fact that Williams Winery is back in the picture. Cam Fountain is a guy that Tennessee is continuing to have conversations with. We're going to see some guys pop up throughout the fall, right? We saw it last year with Arian Carter. He was a guy that was a three-star running back committed to Memphis, and then he became one of the highest rated linebackers in the country a battle between Tennessee and Alabama and a huge win for the balls on the recruiting trail so we will continue to follow it continue to keep you guys updated but look it's go time fall camp is here fall camp starts Wednesday we're going to be doing a live stream Wednesday night at 7 p.m eastern time with Eric Kane in the house so I hope you guys will come hang out for that also join me tonight at 6 30 p.m eastern time for ncaa football but as always guys smash the thumbs up it helps the channel it's quick free and easy you want to do a little bit more you want to donate to the channel one dollar you want to donate one dollar you can give more if you want hit the join button down below you become a member of this channel you get custom talking balls emojis access to fan call-in shows i try to highlight your comments when we've got the busy hectic post-game shows uh, so if you want to help the channel, hit that join button. We would greatly appreciate it. Also, you can go check out the merchandise. The Buck Fama shirts are back. You guys demanded it, so we brought them back. Uh, bonfire.com slash store slash talking balls. There's also a link in the description for that, a link in the description for how you can support Spire Sports Group and get involved in the NIL game, a link in the description for stickers and decals, all kinds of fun stuff. But I thank you guys for the way you support this channel. And if you can't give financially, that's fine. Hit that thumbs up. 
because that's quick, free, and easy. Jump into the comment section. Let's talk some Tennessee football because this is the Talking Balls Network. My name is Boogie Bentley. Go Big Orange.